as black journalists especially, we can get caught up in the white gaze. You're in these newsrooms. You know your audience may be majority white, so it might skew the way you're telling these stories. That, that woman who looks like my mother and my, or my aunt or my grandmother, it matters um, that, that they know I got it right. So Into America, you are traveling across the country. What is your experience as a black man, you know, um, traveling across America in a time of crisis? Besides the limitations on where we can actually travel, um, it's not much different than traveling as a black journalist during the quote-unquote best of times. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of responsibility as, as a black journalist, and especially in the tradition that I, that I believe I walk in. You know, I started in the black press, the Philadelphia Tribune of Philly, telling our stories and telling the stories of those who are marginalized and isolated has always been very important for me. But that means going to places that a lot of outlets, a lot of journalists don't care to go, aren't willing to go, uh, don't have the desire to go. And so right now, more than ever, we need journalists in the tradition that are shining light in dark places, uh, those who, who have had to face serious adversity in our skin. You wrote a piece in the Times, but you mentioned almost what seemed like a benefit of being a black journalist uh, reporting in black communities. And there was this sort of acceptance um, mm -hmm. and this willingness that like, you know, let me tell you my story. I, f I first felt that kind of connection and that um, it felt like home in a lot of ways telling these stories, even the tough stories in Philly um, as a police and crime reporter. And so oftentimes I would end up in these places where a young man or young woman has just been killed and as a journalist you have to find a way to tell this story and so you're walking up on doorsteps you're, you're popping up at the hospital in places where people are at their very worst and at their lowest right they're in deep pain and there were moments there when i both in the victim and the survivors that i saw myself or people who look like me or my family my, my mother my uncles my aunts but there was a feeling of that you understand Right, and I've tried to uphold that through my journalism. And sometimes our journalism is the very last uh, remnant of life as it was lived, or death that was as it was lived. And so that connection to the community has always helped um, because one, I get access. I've always gotten access where some other journalists might not get that access. Um, but it's also a responsibility. And for me, if I'm not telling the people's story, what am I doing? I will tell a compelling story, whether it's from black, brown, red, or yellow but there is a special connection to my community. And given the history in America, all that we've been through as a, as a people, um, and other marginalized people have been through, and working class people have been through, and poor people have been through in this country, it feels to me as, let me hold your hand and tell you this story about this place or this people. Joining me now is a reporter who's been here for MSNBC.com, Tremaine Lee, who was here last night. Um, Tremaine, how would you describe what we're well, seeing here? first of all, what a difference a day makes. Uh, one person down here described it as freedom. This is what freedom looks like. Uh, what they've seen the last few days they felt was not freedom. I think as a black journalist, I think you, you, you certainly, and I'll speak for myself, have taken a lot of the weight. I've seen, um, you know, the violence committed against our communities, um, whether it's the big cases of the Mike Browns or Eric Garners um, or Trayvon Martins of, of the world, or it's family members, but I think it's not unlike the weight that black people carry, whether you're a journalist or a contractor or a bus driver. As, as journalists, sometimes we come up with this idea of objectivity, where it's just two sides. If you have a, a Democrat say something, then you have a Republican say something. Just quote both sides and that's objectivity. That gives us the illusion of being arm's length with stories and issues. We are all arriving at these moments with who we are, right, and how we've experienced the world and how the world experiences us. My agenda is honesty. It is the truth. If we're reporting on issues uh, that impact the black community in particular, can we dance around slavery? Can we dance around segregation? Can we dance around state-sanctioned violence or all the abstract violence of poverty and lack of access to healthcare or education? Can we dance around those things in the name of objectivity and not appearing like we have some agenda? Or is the agenda the truth? That's an economic injustice, an environmental injustice, and a racial injustice. And then when you add health overlaid on top, it's a health injustice. Right, so let's talk about Cancer Alley and um, your most recent episode. So when we think about um, environmental justice and environmental racism and COVID-19, there is a clear overlap. 
going back to that that notion that somehow those who have hypertension and, and other um, health ailments did it to themselves. Oftentimes, people forget about the environment and race. So when you think about Cancer Alley, Cancer Alley is an 85 mile stretch between New Orleans and Baton Rouge that snakes along the Mississippi River. In that space, in Cancer Alley, there are over 200 refineries and petrochemical plants. The closer you get to the plants, the blacker it becomes. The closer you get to the plants, the more impoverished these communities are. Folks have been there for generations because many of these plants are situated on land that used to be plantation land. So when you talk about these fence line communities, those folks are coming up with mysterious cancers. They're dying young. This is where we enter the conversation of COVID-19. In Louisiana, 32% of the population is black, but black folks represent 70% of the COVID-19 deaths. And you wonder why. Folks are vulnerable because they have all these ailments and lung issues and cancers related to what they've been drinking in the water and what they've been breathing. Is there hope for black people in Cancer Alley in the midst of this crisis? I, I think the hope in speaking to folks down there and speaking to um, you know folks who have a, a deep relationship with this space is that the fight continues, that the struggle continues. This is the same space in 1811 where 500 enslaved people took up arms in the largest rebellion in U.S. history, right? It was unsuccessful, clearly, and, and slavery would go on for another 50 years in that space. But these are communities who have longed for it. There's a tradition. They're connected to the ground in so many ways. So I think if there is hope at all, it's that folks are fighting back. So you say here, there's this exhausting dance between the Black death and Black scribe, and it's as much a performance in journalism as a perpetual act of catharsis. What, so if you wouldn't mind your reflections on that and um, really what that means. There is a catharsis. There is a release of telling these stories and getting it right. But at the heart of it, I think it's important to feel a nugget of the hurt and a nugget of the pain to pass a little bit out. So let's hold America to, to its ideals. America, the great, America, the beautiful. Let's hold that mirror up and, and have a little bit of this pain because this is what we feel every single day. And as a journalist, I think the, what changes that is, again, the responsibility. You gotta stay composed. You gotta stay distant enough to tell the story. You gotta learn to process it. We gotta learn to breathe. We, we have to learn to, um, we can never disconnect, but we can dislodge some of it for a time. They need us. <laughs> they need us as black journalists. They need us as journalists. They need us to push and push to tell the truth because as we know, there are powers and influences in this country that would rather the truth not be told.